Today, I will talk about myasthenia gravis. So, what is it? Well, if you had to explain that in one sentence, that would be that myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease where the body attacks the muscle receptors, which leads to muscle weakness. So, in order to understand myasthenia gravis, I will cover physiology, pathology, clinical presentation, diagnosis, and lastly, treatment of myasthenia gravis. So, starting with a few facts. So, who is getting affected by this disease? Well, then you have to look at age distribution. And myasthenia gravis is distributed in a bimodal way, which basically means that it has two peaks. First peak is seen from 20 to 30 years old, and again later from 40 to 60 years old. So, when it affects people in the younger age, it's mostly affecting women. And in the later age, it's mostly affecting men. And when it comes to the prevalence, the prevalence it's estimated that if we have 1 million people, then 200 people out of this 1 million people will get myasthenia gravis. Before we get into all the details of what's happening in myasthenia gravis, we should always look at how the body should work. So in this case, because it is about the neuromuscular junction, then we have to take a look at how the neuromuscular junction should usually work. So let's get into the physiology. So first of all, what is a neuromuscular junction? Well, it is basically a connection between a neuron and a muscle. And here I have drawn a picture of a muscle and a neuron that is attached to that muscle. And what we see here is basically these connections here between the neuron and the muscle. And so we said this is the neuron. And this is the muscle. So what happens is that when this neuron gets an impulse, it will send neurotransmitters and specifically they will send a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine and when these neurotransmitters will go to the other side they will bind to these receptors on the muscle and these receptors they are called nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And so when these acetylcholines, they bind to this receptor, they activate chain of reaction, which will cause a muscle contraction. So this is how the muscle will usually uh, contract and that's how it should work. And I also want to add a few terms that you have to be familiar with when it comes to the neuromuscular junction. And that is that this part it, here, it's called the presynaptic membrane because in this part, there will be released neurotransmitters. And then on this side, they will, it's called for a uh, postsynaptic membrane because it's that part that is receiving the neurotransmitters. And the area in between the presynaptic and postsynaptic membrane, we call for synaptic cleft. And here, all the exchange is going on. And the last structure you have to know is this guy over here. He is a protein and he is called specific muscle kinase. And they have an important role because they make sure that the postsynaptic membrane stays healthy. And the way they do that is by, for example, recycling these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. 
So this was about how the neuromuscular junction should work and how we should have a muscle contraction. But now it's time to look at where exactly it goes wrong in myasthenia gravis. So if you're interested in that, then keep watching the next video.